is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony and today i'm quite excited for this one this is my first ever mitsubishi review we are in the new 2020 mitsubishi eclipse cross courtesy of platinum mitsubishi in mechanicsburg pa and so besides it being my first ever review in a mitsubishi this one is quite exciting because to start it has a very good name the eclipse cross of course with the mitsubishi eclipse being a legend back in the day bring it back mitsubishi second of all comes with a great warranty five year 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain so excellent there so what do you say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Eclipse Cross first one being the ES starting at $22,845 LE for $23,945 SE for $25,495 and lastly the SEL which is the one we have today of course starting at $26,995 and of course that was all actually pricing for the front wheel drive variant so if you wanted to go with the four wheel drive variant and actually miss Mitsubishi calls it super all-wheel control. I'll explain that in a second here, but that is going to add $1,600 to any of those prices I just gave you. So real quick, super all-wheel control, what is that? It is not all-wheel drive. It is a four-wheel drive system, and it was originally specifically developed for the 2007 Lancer Evolution, and now is used on vehicles like the Outlander and the Eclipse Cross. If you guys know anything about the Lancer Evolution, you know that was Mitsubishi's rally car. Therefore, with that being a rally car, that all-wheel drive system had to be amazing with it being raced in snow and dirt and things like that so therefore quite a nice four-wheel drive system to come with the Eclipse Cross. But so then when it comes to the power plant powering this beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder putting out 152 horsepower at 5500 rpm 184 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 2000 to 3500 rpm again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT giving you MPG numbers at 26 and 6 City 29 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 City 26 highway for the four wheel drive. Either way, it does take regular unleaded fuel, so that's certainly a plus to save you some money there. Did want to also mention, since we're touching on fuel economy, there's also an eco button just in front of the shifter there. If you press that, it's going to reduce the throttle response, climate control, things like that. All in all, the concept there is to help you save even more MPGs if you wanted it. So I would probably use that if you did a lot of highway driving. That's certainly going to help you out there. But anywho, Nonetheless, let's go ahead and now turn that off and let's do a quick little acceleration here in the new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. So you can definitely tell it is a CVT. There was no real gear changes there because there aren't any. But one of the main things I was actually looking for was turbo lag, which I did not find. So that is a good thing. Overall power was pretty much as expected. Certainly not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. So for me, acceleration was just fine in the Eclipse Cross. But to then to go along with that, as always, braking is equally important. Up front, you're gonna find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. And overall, as far as the brake, Breaking feel goes. I've had absolutely no issues today. So braking feel is quite nice. Touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, a multi-link rear suspension, again, with the stabilizer bar. And as far as the steering feel goes, it's pretty much as expected. I will say it is a little bit heavier of a weight to it, which is nice, comparatively speaking to some other SUVs that I've tested. So as far as the steering feel goes, it's definitely quite nice in the Eclipse Cross. When it comes to ride quality, so far, so good. At least on my short test drive today. Haven't hit too many obstacles or potholes, of course, but ride quality has been just fine so far. Cabin noise is quite good as well. The only thing I've really heard so far is some floor mats wrapped in plastic sliding around in the trunk, but other than that, no issues with cabin noise either. And then touching on visibility, visibility is fine, I guess you could say, after you kind of train your eyes not to look at that center bar that separates the upper and lower rear window back there, but overall visibility actually isn't bad. It's just that center bar is just somewhat distracting but I would imagine you would get used to that if you were to drive this on a daily basis. But 
continuing visibility, there's a couple features that help with forward visibility as well. For instance, a head-up display is going to be available if you wanted to go that route, as well as rain-sensing windshield wipers coming standard for the SE and SEL trim levels. And those are pretty cool. They're kind of like automatic headlights. So if it were to start drizzling, the Eclipse Cross would then sense that and automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you. So you don't have to worry about flicking them on or anything like that. So it's kind of one less thing you have to worry about, focus more of your time on driving. So that's kind of cool too. But that kind of rounds out the performance segment of the Eclipse Cross. Let's go ahead and make our way to the next year and let's check out this new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And so now starting up front, you will find silver and chrome accents if you were to go with the SE or SEL trim levels. However, if you went with the ES or LE, those silver and chrome accents are gonna simply be replaced by body colored accents. So I'm sure that's gonna look just as good. But to the sides, halogen headlights can be found on the ES, LE, and SE trim levels. If you wanted to go LED, simply go with the SEL trim level that we have today. However, I did wanna mention, those LED headlights are available on the other trims as well, some of the other trims as well. So if you wanted to go with the lesser trim level but still wanted the LED headlights, you can go that route if you wanted to. Either way, automatic feature comes standard with the SE and SEL trim levels, meaning when it starts to get dark out, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. It's always nice. Just below, fog lights standard on all trim levels. There's actually a lot of SUVs out there these days that make fog lights either an option or they're going to be standard on upper trim levels as opposed to all of them. So that's kind of nice that the Eclipse Cross did that. Also, LED daytime running lights, also standard on every single trim level. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Eclipse Cross here. Looking up when it comes to those roof rails, they are actually optional on the SE and SEL trim levels. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard for every single trim level, as well as chrome window surrounds. Definitely nice that they put the chrome window surrounds to tie it in with the chrome accents on the front of the Eclipse Cross there. Side mirrors, when it comes to them, you're going to get body colored side mirrors for the ES, SE, and SE. L trim levels, black side mirrors with the LE, and in case I haven't mentioned it yet, that LE is kind of the sportier trim level of the Eclipse Cross, so to speak. Heated side mirrors come standard on all trim levels, that's definitely a good thing. And power folding side mirrors can be found in the SE and SEL, and actually those integrated turn signals, again with other SUVs, they're going to be found on the higher trim levels, but with the Eclipse Cross, integrated LED turn signals are found on every single trim level, that is awesome. So. Anyhow, let's back back out here and let's make our way to the wheel setup. 16 inch alloy wheels can be found on the ES and there's actually a new design for 2020. So it's not what you're looking at right now, of course, but that is kind of cool. 18 inch alloy wheels can be found on all other trim levels, but the ES because I just mentioned that of course. So 18 inch alloy wheels on all other trims. Last thing I wanted to mention as far as the side of the SUV goes is there is a shark fin antenna found on top for all trim levels, but now let's make our way to the back here. Rear roof spoiler can be found on every single trim level as well as a rear window wiper just below. In case you guys didn't notice, a lot of manufacturers will put that rear window wiper on the glass, but Mitsubishi kind of hides it up underneath. You guys can see that underneath that spoiler there, kind of like the Cadillac Escalade does or Chevy Suburban, so I think it's kind of cool. Anywho, backing back out, LED taillights standard on every single trim level. Well done, Eclipse Cross for that. LED high mount stoplight as well. Single exhaust outlet found just below, tucked away for all trim levels. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, they simply just lift up underneath and that is how you're going to get that one open. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to commit at 22.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, however, those rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping the cubic feetness up to 48.9, so a good bit of space back there. And so since we're back here, I did want to mention there is a cargo light back there. There is no in-floor storage, but in place of that, you will find a full-size spare, so that is going to be found in the back there. Grocery hooks also found back there, and a massive Rockford Fosgate subwoofer. It is a beast. I kind of like how you can see it as well, so I can't wait to test out the sound system in a little bit here. Make your way to the back seats. Rear legroom comes in at 35.3 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. 
If you wanted a rear center armrest with cup holders that can be found on the SE and SEL trim levels, heated rear seats are actually optional on the SEL. We do happen to have that today. That is awesome. That is really a luxury feature, usually find with a luxury manufacturer. So that is pretty cool. Then you can also find, of course, a 12 volt power outlet for those rear passengers. But perhaps the coolest thing that we had today, at least, there is a dual panel moonroof. Dual panel means the front seats get one and the rear passenger seats get one, but it gets better than that. A lot of times you have to control that rear panel moonroof from the front. However, those rear passengers can actually control that themselves. There is a little button on the roof of the Eclipse Cross. They can simply open that up or close it whenever they wanted to. So that's one of the coolest things for the rear passengers at least, but let's make our way to the front seats. Manually adjustable seats come with the ES, LE, and SE trim levels. You will find an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat if you want with the SEL. Heated front seats are gonna come standard for all trims, but the ES. Then you have cloth seating for the ES, LE, and SE, and leather seating for the SEL. That's what you're looking at right now, of course. And I do like the copper accent stitching that can be found on these seats as well, as well as the doors, it ties in there too. And Overall, the seats are quite comfortable. I also like how there's vertical seams. There's no horizontal seams. The horizontal seams sometimes create awkward pressure points. So the vertical seams are definitely the way to go, in my opinion, at least. But taking a look up front at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It will come leather wrapped for the SE and SEL trim levels. And there's a nice piano black finish near the bottom as well. I was a fan of that. And if you wanted it heated, that is actually going to be an option for the SEL trim level only. So. That is pretty cool and that's gonna be there for you as well. But now let's make our way to the startup and let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Mitsubishi logo on the one side and when you flip it over, you have lock and unlock. But to actually start this one up, it is a turnkey start with the exception of the SE and SEL trim levels. So therefore, we do have a push button start today. All I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there. But so that what started up, these gauges are actually pretty cool. Tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right. The pretty cool part is the intro that they give you when you first start up the Eclipse Cross. There is a picture of the Eclipse Cross front and center. So I thought that was pretty cool. Can of course check out your basic information up there, outside temperature, trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, stuff like that. But another cool thing about the Eclipse Cross is then when you turn it off, it doesn't say goodbye like some of the other manufacturers do. It says see you. I like that. It's different and it's kind of cool. So well done Mitsubishi there. I got a kick out of that. Overall interior quality, that dual pane panoramic sunroof I keep mentioning, it's optional on the SE and SEL trim levels. Dual zone climate control is going to come with the SE and SEL. You're going to find a black headliner with the SEL that we have today. Also pretty nice. As far as finishes go, you do have some silver plastic around the shifter that carries on to just above the glove box and the doors as well. I do kind of like the carbon fiber look around the window buttons on both the driver and passenger side doors. That looks pretty cool. That piano black finish that I was talking about in the steering wheel that carries on to right around the shifter. So I don't mind that. I see a couple of my fingerprints in there already, but also just in front of the shifter, you're going to find two USB charging ports. There's a 12 volt power outlet. Once again, little storage area just below that is a rubberized storage area so things don't slide around there. You also have an electronic parking brake to the right of the cup holders and by the way the cup holders are to the left of the electronic parking brake and just below that center armrest you're going to find a pretty deep storage area actually with a little tray there again with a carpet like finish so things don't slide around once again but overall some pretty nice finishes there so let's make our way to the tech display now front and center you're going to get a seven inch color touchscreen display for all trim levels and if you went with the LE trim level and up, there's also going to be a touchpad controller just kind of directly to the back right hand corner of the shifter. Touchpad controller, kind of like Lexus does actually. It was pretty easy to use, honestly. I was playing around with that for a little bit. So I think I would still prefer the touchscreen, but that touchpad controller is kind of handy if you were to be driving so you don't have that long reach. So that's pretty cool that that's there. But either way, Bluetooth and audio streaming come standard on all trim levels. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, also all trims, but the ES trim level and that's how you're going to get that also you can check out your radio information of course and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will find four speakers for the es and le and six speakers for the se and sel and there is actually an optional touring package that adds 2100 that adds a rockford fosgate sound system with that massive subwoofer in the trunk so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn this eclipse cross back on see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Ton of 
bass with that sound system, I will say that actually very clear. Rockford Fosgate did a very good job with clarity with the Eclipse Cross there. Definitely felt like it was coming in all directions as well. So very nice job with the Rockford Fosgate. Again, that's an optional sound system with the touring package that adds $2,100, but very nice there. The last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Eclipse Cross in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines and you're actually gonna get multiple views including a 360 degree view if you went with the SEL trim level that we have today. So that's what you're looking at right now. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention, probably the most important thing when it comes to safety, the Eclipse Cross did get a IIHS top safety pick rating. So that is absolutely wonderful to start with. Front side and side curtain airbags come standard as well as a driver's knee airbag for all trim levels. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, that's all pretty basic stuff. But SE and SEL trim levels are also going to add an electronic parking brake with auto hold, blind spot warning with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, automatic high beams, forward collision mitigation with pedestrian detection, and lane departure warning. This is one of the cool things. I actually got it on film in this video. That was pretty cool, but the Eclipse Cross basically yells at you when you go over the lane a little bit, which is good. That means that's gonna prevent you from getting into an accident. So I love that. Also optional on the SEL if you wanted it, there is an adaptive cruise control system available there too. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. And thank you guys so much for stopping by and I will see y'all in the next video. Stay gold.